We're at a coffee shop in Vista at a Yahoo meetup group my friend Mark found. Hey, let's go meet some randoms and hope they're not murderers or trolls. The group is called Vista Fights Human Trafficking and it aims to prevent slavery in the US. My interest in civil rights comes from having mine violated where I grew up in Phoenix. Because of discrimination I faced there, I left after college and moved to my dream city where racism is dead, San Diego. <laughs> the cafe is crowded. While I wait for my food, I sit with the other attendees at a big table. There's Mark, who's 20 years older, He's white and drums in a Middle Eastern band. His friend Aralia came too. She's a grad student focused on human rights. I'm in my 20s and ethnically ambiguous. Some people think I'm black or Mexican. The organizer is a cheerful blonde woman named Sunny who will no longer be smiling by the end. And there's a man and a woman no one knows. When Sunny invites us to speak, the woman, we'll call her Martina, starts to dominate the meeting. She looks professional and is very persuasive. George W. Bush is president, and we all agree he isn't doing a good job. Until she starts blaming W. for not being tough enough on immigrants. Martina disparages the aliens who sneak in from Mexico. And during this diatribe, she admits she is Mexican. Now the man speaks, let's call him Gus. He's a bald, burly white guy with a picture of a gun on his shirt. He insists illegals are pouring into the US and border patrol just lets them. I know nothing about immigration, but being from Phoenix, I know racism. For years, the sheriff, Joe Arpaio, has violated federal law by racially profiling Latinos. Many end up in his prison camp outdoor tents that reach 140 degrees. Inmates are denied, food, are denied water, are fed rotten food, are tortured and tased. At least 155 prisoners have died, costing the city $140 million in damages. My friend spent 10 days there on a DUI. His first night, he saw men rape another man in the holding cell, where suspects are put before they're charged with a crime. And in a five-year period, I was hassled a dozen times and detained for such offenses as sitting in a park, my license plate light being out, and failure to yield, after which my passengers and I were forced to sit with our hands up for an hour, so long that they went numb. My name is called at the counter. The journalist in me is intrigued. But when I return with my food, Aralia, who is Mexican, and Mark both look concerned. A guy near our table is staring, and I hope he doesn't have the wrong idea about us. Sunny asks if anyone has current research to share. Though Aralia brought her do doctoral research on human trafficking, Martina presents her studies instead. She is regional president of an immigration group called FAIR. Sounds legit. But at last, Sunny asks what we're all thinking. What does illegal immigration have to do with sex trafficking? In Martina's contention, the federal government is responsible for slavery and the thousands of perverted illegals here. And they live in camps in McGonagall Canyon. They want sex slaves from Mexico, so children are trafficked to serve the illegals already here. I must fact check her. <laughs> what you're talking about? if it happens, is rare. Most slaves come here legally. I tell of a teenaged girl who came from Indonesia to be a nanny in LA. The family confiscated her passport, forced her to work seven days a week unpaid, and beat her. After two years, she was rescued. Aralia backs me up. Most slaves are not running across the border. Now Martina asks the question I despise. What are you, Mexican? I say no. I've endured a lifetime of rude people who study me like I'm alien and need to identify me by my race. When my dad gave me up for adoption, I got two white parents and no interest or connection to my culture aside from checking a box on forms. If they gave only five choices for race and said choose one, I picked white. 
Martina is adamant that she is here legally. I went through many steps to become a citizen, but the illegals are rapists and druggies. Aralia and I shoot each other looks. Not only does Martina use her race as justification to vilify other immigrants, but she and Gus are infiltrators, reminding us that any Yahoo can come to a meetup. Mark looks keenly aware that he is the white guy at the table. He's wide-eyed and staring down at his plate, refusing to engage. And another patron is giving us the worried side eye. Gus chimes in, I've seen illegals cross the border. I go patrol it to keep them from bringing their twisted sex trade. So you're, I start to say militia, but I'm not sure that's politically correct. I've been civil at first because I was curious and now because I'm really wary of offending white supremacists, <laughs> like I've done before. When I was a teenaged driver, I obnoxiously flipped off a little dick truck that was all up on my tailpipe. <laughs> it chased me down and parked horizontally, blocking my car. You know that nightmare I think everyone has, where two skinheads jump out yelling, fuck you, and rush over to your window, bang on it with their fists, and try to open your door? So that happened. There was hatred in their eyes. I was terrified they'd break the glass and drag me out. One went around to the passenger side and tried to open that door. Surrounded, I shrugged helplessly and mouthed, I'm sorry. Only then did they stop to look at me and realized I was just a girl. They slammed their middle fingers on my windshield and sped off. But I still have guilt. I provoked Nazis. And I felt it would have been my fault if I had gotten my ass kicked, leading me to a do not engage policy when it comes to hostiles. Gus confirms, I'm a minute man. My coffee is still too hot to drink and I didn't get a to-go cup. Sonny looks dejected and has given up trying to regain control. So Gus takes this opportunity to hand out business cards. That's how I find out he's the head of the San Diego Minutemen. Because its members assault immigrants, it is designated as a hate group. In fact, it's so extremist that the official Minutemen renounced all ties to San Diego. It's like when Sheriff Joe Arpaio's fans finally turned on him. He had illegally targeted judges and politicians and jailed reporters who exposed him. He lied in court destroyed evidence and flouted too many laws. My chair scrapes the ground as I back away. The guy next to us is packing up his stuff. He seems angry. Now Martina hands out her card. The Federation for American Immigration Reform, or FAIR, is also a hate group. <laughs> its founder, a white supremacist, promotes racist conspiracy theories and eugenics, the science the Nazis used to try to create a master race. Looking at the business cards, I notice Martina and Gus have the same last name because they're married. It's a match made in hell. And this is a recruitment meeting. I give my untouched food my full attention as the blissful couple continues to rant. I'm no longer hungry. My friends and I don't know how to extract ourselves. We are one half of the table's occupants, so we can't slip away unnoticed because politeness matters. <laughs> In a last ditch effort, I mention girls trafficked from Asia and Central America, but they only wanna talk about Mexico. My fact checking mission is over. I burn my mouth chugging my coffee, but Martina and Gus feel encouraged now that we've taken their cards and have sat for more than two minutes. We're too nice. Gus complains, the government goes after the militia while ignoring the illegals. And every time we have meetings, the cops show up. Tell them about the raid, Martina cries. Gus says that when the Minutemen took it upon themselves to be heroes by evicting the migrants from McGonagall Canyon, the cops stormed the homes of the Minutemen. And the man who reported the sex slaves in the canyon was charged with filing a false police report. 
I feel dizzy. I'm disgusted to be sharing air with people who abuse homeless immigrants. Just then, two cop cars pull up. Do the officers come have a coffee? No, they stay in the parking lot just watching. Gus says they've been following him. For the first time, I believe him. (laughs) One cop is parked next to me and I feel great urgency to leave before they start taking photos of us to add me to the militia shit list. With some sort of ESP, Mark, Aurelia, and I get up at the same time, abandoning our food. We flee for our separate cars. I force myself to make eye contact with the officer and give a weak smile, like, hey, I'm not white. I'm the victim here. The cops remain there as I drive away, shocked that racism is alive and well in 2007, in the place where I moved to get away from it. Martina thought her race precluded her from being racist. It didn't. And I wish I would have said that during my dinner with the border militia. I was stunned as this hypocrisy manifested again in 2016. Yet that election also brought relief to Phoenix when Sheriff Arpaio, after 24 years, was voted out and convicted for abusing Latinos, proving that even the most powerful tyrant can be ousted and sent to jail. I wrote this before Trump pardoned him. (laughs) Now a fierce defender of human rights, when I'm asked on a form, what are you? I write human and go on my way.